the Amazons, famous female warriors of ancient Greece, equal to the ancient heroes of Achilles and Hector, yet completely mythical. Indeed, factual ancient Greek history is pretty much dominated by powerful military leaders, almost all of which are male. However, one woman would prove to be the real-life equivalent of an Amazon warrior, leading armies into battle and winning the love and support of her troops. Furthermore, she was of the royal bloodline, with her half-brother being none other than the great Macedonian king Alexander the Great. Who was this real-life Amazon? This is the life of Sienna, Alexander's warrior sister. To understand the real-life Amazon, Sienna, we must first look into her parents. Her father was the powerful and ambitious Philip II of Macedon. Philip had been previously held as a political hostage in the Greek city of Thebes. After this, he revolutionised the Macedonian army from the thuggish, loosely organised infantry unit but highly skilled cavalry into one of the most dangerous war machines of the ancient world. Philip began to expand Macedon's influence over their neighbours, which included the nearby Illyrian tribes. In 358 BC, Philip defeated the Illyrian king in battle and took the daughter of his fallen foe captive. He then later married the princess in order to bring the Illyrians to heel. This foreign princess was called Odata. She was the first of many wives to the Macedonian king, eventually losing the title of chief wife to the Epirite princess Olympias, Alexander the Great's mother. However, Odata was by no means a stereotypical princess. In Illyria, women often held prominent military roles, and Odata was no exception from the norm. She was a highly skilled marksman with the bow and was also highly proficient in various martial arts. When Siena was born in 357 BC, Odata took a very active role in the young princess's upbringing, teaching the toddler all the quintessential skills needed to effectively rule a rowdy Illyrian tribe. Siena soon became famed throughout the Macedonian court. She was often seen hanging with her brother Alexander and his friends. This went against pretty much all Macedonian tradition where women were basically confined to the home, and any woman wanting power would more often than not gain this power in the background, much like Alexander's mother Olympias had done. However, Siena refused to be confined in this role, and would instead often join her father and brother in campaign against the Illyrian tribes. It was during one of these campaigns that Siena first distinguished herself. This was when the Macedonians were fighting against the Illyrians, and indeed seemed to actually be losing the battle. Sienna and her troops outmaneuvered their enemy, and Sienna herself killed the Illyrian queen in a one-on-one -on -one duel. This quickly became a legend among the Macedonian ranks, with her famous duel being orally passed from one unit to the other. However, Sienna's days as a warrior seemed to be numbered. Her father, Philip, ever the political mastermind, arranged for his daughter to be married to the new Illyrian king, her cousin. This marriage quickly resulted in a child, with the new Illyrian princess Adea coming into the world. However, not contempt with being the queen of a subordinate nation, Sienna saw an opportunity to expand her people's power once her father, Philip, had been assassinated in 336 BC. She reportedly tried to persuade her husband to declare war on Macedon, and help her assert a claim over the Macedonian throne. This plan never came to be, as her husband seemed wary of attacking the great power that was Macedon. This loyalty to Macedon didn't pay off as the new Macedonian king, Alexander, Siena's half-brother, had the Illyrian king killed following his coronation. Now, under normal circumstances, Siena's life would now be decided by her brother, who is now the male head of the household. However, Siena was having none of it. Despite Alexander's attempts to marry his sister off, Siena refused every single suitor. Alexander eventually managed to force his stubborn sister into accepting one of the suitors, however in somewhat typical Sienna's style, the groom-to-be died under mysterious circumstances a few days before the wedding. Alexander eventually gave up trying to use Sienna as a political pawn and set out to conquer the Persian Empire, which he did to great effect, taking over much of the empire and even expanding the borders into modern-day Pakistan. During this time, Sienna interestingly enough stayed in Macedon, not Illyria, raising a Dea in the Illyrian traditions. This is rather surprising as Alexander's mother, Olympias, was famed for her jealousy and hatred of her late husband's other wives and children. However, Sienna and Adea seem to have enjoyed a rather peaceful life in the Macedonian court. 
Things would soon come to a head. Alexander would die rather unexpectedly in Babylon, leaving behind a pregnant wife, his favourite half-brother and a dozen power-hungry generals. With no leader to keep the generals in check, Perdiccas, the ringleader and regent over the new Macedonian Empire, declared that if Alexander's unborn baby was a boy, then the empire would be split between Alexander's child and his half-brother. In reality, Perdiccas planned to use both royals as puppets and keep the power all to himself. However, Sienna, always one to ruin carefully thought-out plans, had her own plan. She planned to marry her daughter off to her half-brother and thus secure her own puppet over the new Macedonian Empire. Leaving Macedon, Sienna used her popularity with the troops to raise an army. Not very skilled with table diplomacy, Sienna planned to force the other player's hand, and soon had a sizeable force at her command. Barely 30, the Macedonian Amazon followed in her brother's footsteps and set out for Babylon. Wary of the huge army this woman had assembled, Perdiccas ordered Antipater, one of Alexander's most trusted generals and regent of Macedon, to force the upstart princess back into her neat box in Illyria. However, much to the surprise of everyone, Sienna easily brushed aside Antipater's force, with many of his soldiers switching sides to her army. Sienna was after all a famous name in their ranks and many thought it was an honour to serve under her. Realising the threat that Sienna posed, Perdiccas sent his brother, Electus, a childhood friend of Sienna, in the hopes of convincing the warrior princess into retreating back to Illyria. If this failed, Electus was under orders to battle his childhood friend, and if it came to it, kill her. Electus set off with a large force, eventually catching up with Sienna and her army. There, the two childhood friends agreed to a parley, to discuss a diplomatic way out of the situation. Sienna, overconfident in her own legend, believed that she could sway Electus and his forces over to her side. With this, she boldly walked up to the negotiating table, scolded her former friend for siding with Perdiccas, and claimed she would rather die than lose her lands and her honours. It was then that Electus acted. Halfway through her speech, Sienna was stabbed by her former friend. With the princess dying in his arms, Electus was surprised by the groanings and general disapproving looks he was getting from his soldiers. It seemed Sienna had been right in her assumption that the men of Macedon would join her side, as the barrage of abuse the brother of Perdiccas would receive from his own troops became almost unbearable. The situation soon became so unpleasant that his army began threatening mutiny, saying they wanted Sienna's wishes to be carried out. Forced by his army, Electus helped wed Adea to her uncle. Adea, it seemed, was more than up to the task. She quickly became the power behind the throne, even overruling Perdiccas on multiple occasions. Once Perdiccas was killed by his own men during the outbreak of the First War of Diadochi, or the Wars of the Successors, Adea assumed even more power and renamed herself Eurydice. She began negotiating treaties, addressing public assemblies, and basically doing all the things a queen would do. Thus, fulfilling her late mother's wishes. Sienna's influence over the Greek world is hard to ignore, however, it is often overlooked in favour of the more famous Diadochi, such as Perdiccas, Ptolemy and Seleucus. Indeed, she was the first to raise an army to assert herself as a power behind the now empty throne and by doing so influenced others to do the same. She should also, however, be remembered as a woman who defied tradition to strike out on her own and become a real-life Amazon of the Macedonians. Thanks for watching and listening to our video. If you like the channel, consider subscribing to Ancient History Guy. Or, if you really like the channel, head on over to our Patreon feed. There, for as little as $1 a month, you can gain access to exclusive documentaries, behind-the-scenes footage, and videos before they're live on YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.